Hi, this is Dan Handeen. I'm the assistant project manager for the University of Minnesota's entry to the Solar Decathlon competition, the Icon House. And this is a series of slides from the last week of July. It's been steady crunch time for the past few weeks because uh, we're about three weeks away from our scheduled dry-in date of August 14th. Here's the house viewed from the east side. From here you can see the icon shape and the porch off the southeast corner. The white stuff on the walls and the roof is the closed cell polyurethane foam insulation and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Here we have just received a shipment of windows from Marvin, one of our generous corporate sponsors. Um, these windows were manufactured in War Road, Minnesota. These windows will go on the upper portion of the east kitchen wall. You can see the trapezoidal shapes that fit in the framed openings there. Early on, we were researching which windows had the highest insulation values, and fortunately, Minnesota-based Marvin has recently developed a high-efficiency window, and uh, Marvin flew a number of our students up to War Road to tour their plant and get a first-hand look at the windows and see how they're made. All of the windows are triple glazed, which means they have three panes of glass with a layer of inert gas in between each of them. Uh, this is done because the gas acts as a good insulator, much better than regular air. Below that, at head level, uh, will be the electrochromic windows. These windows will become tinted when a small electric current is applied to the window pane. They're not in yet, but they'll be coming from Sage Glass, which is based in Faribault, Minnesota. All of the windows need a waterproof membrane around the framing. It's a rubberized adhesive back tape that keeps water from getting into the wall from ar around the window. And you can see that here on the west side. It's the black stuff around the window opening. This is the northwest corner, and you can see the three upper clear story windows. The front door and the west wall are all flashed with the waterproof membrane. Here's Jason, one of our student volunteers in the construction management program. Here he is in the kitchen window, right where the sink will go, and one of the sage glass window units will go. This is the window schedule from Marvin. Uh, right behind it is some of the metal flashing that will go around the window opening. That metal flashing is what protects the rubberized membrane from the sun and from getting punctured, but more importantly, it makes it look better. Here the crew is discussing the installation of the windows, and you can see Heather on the ladder test fitting the window for the bathroom. Here they are securing the metal flashing and removing the shipping hardware from the window frame. You can see the beige strip along the window frame here. In a typical house, that gets folded out and nailed against the exterior sheathing, but we're removing that as well. We have a different method of installation because we want the glass in the middle of the wall for thermal reasons, and we have an unusual kind of window trim that uses the metal flashing instead of the wood that you typically see on a residence. And here's the window going in. You can see the metal flashing in the window frame. Also, you can see a slight tint to the glass. This is because there's a very thin layer of metal applied to one of the panes of glass. This layer of metal reflects the heat spectrum of sunlight. This keeps it from getting inside and overheating the house while still allowing the visible spectrum of sunlight to come through. It has to be level in the frame, obviously. And since we're not using the nailing flange, we need to have somebody on the outside and the inside of the window while it's being mounted to make sure it's in the right place. It's shimmed for fit and checked for level again. And then to secure it, we drive screws through the window frame into the wall framing. Then it will get sealed with caulk to make sure it's weather and airtight. Another thing we're doing to make sure the house is airtight is using a polyurethane spray foam from BASF. Here's a shot of the interior of the mechanical room after the foam has been sprayed into the stud cavities. Most of the foam was installed by Homeco insulation professionals, but there were a few little areas where we needed to fill on our own. And here's a shot of one of the workers getting the hang of how to apply it. The cavities were completely filled so that the face of the insulation would be flush with the face of the wall studs. This gives us a total of 7 inches of polyurethane foam. That, with the additional middle layer of polyisocyanurate board, 
gives us a total insulation value of about R42 for the wall. This is more than twice what you'd usually find in a house. The foam needed to be shaved and sanded back so that we could mount the plywood sheathing on the exterior and the drywall on the interior. And here's one of the workers using a belt sander to smooth it down to the studs. The hardened foam is very dense. It's about the consistency of balsa wood and it took a long time and a lot of patience to shave everything back. And the dust got all, all over everybody. We made it snow in July. Jason put in long days of foam shaving. Because of the density of the foam along with the completeness of the fill, all of the electrical and plumbing lines had to be run before we sprayed the insulation. And Jason is shown here making sure everything is still in place after the shaving. Here's a view of the mechanical room with all the electrical and ventilation installed. You'll notice the foam hasn't been shaved back yet in this photo. More fun for somebody. These are the three clear story windows on the north wall of the living room, right above where the computer desk and bookshelves will be. You can kind of see where the module breaks are in this photo. On the right, you can see the doubled up trusses. In between those is the vertical cut. And the horizontal cut is in the quadruple top plate above the door. This is where the pieces of the house will separate to be able to ship to DC. So there we are, after long hours and lots of hard work. And we still have quite a way to go. With the interior finishes, the solar components, and the heating and cooling systems still to be installed, we have a very ambitious project, but it's really starting to feel like home, and not just because we spent so much time there.